Hello, I'm back and today I'm gonna try this pattern. Okay, there's a bit of explanation on this. I kind of save scraps and some of those scraps I save simply because they're too big to throw away. Some of them I save simply because I love the fabric. And now I finally found a pattern that I can use for it and I'll link it down below. But it is Petit Boo Slippers pattern and I hope I will have enough to make a few. Okay, this is my big ass messy table right now. This is the pattern. I need to cut it out, paste it together and then um, like probably trace some of the sizes. I'm gonna start with one for myself. I've got some, what is it, calico there to make it twirl. This is my old 40s evening dress twirl. Don't know if that video goes up before this one or after this one. It's not finished. So probably go after, but that's the twill. And then I've got that fabric, which is literally from the dress I'm wearing. That fabric, which you've seen by now, because that comes from the blue dress that I made from the same pattern as that one. I've got that, which is a fabric I used to make that out of. This is some fluffy, like what is this? This is batting. I believe this is bamboo batting. I might put this in between. I've got this, which is one big fluffy mess, and I hate it because it shats everywhere, but it's gonna make it very, very cozy. I've got some fabrics in there, which is a 100% wool fabric that I use to make a coat that doesn't quite fit me and I kind of need to get rid of because I don't wear it. And there's some more stuff in here that I might use for insides or outsides. I also have some filled somewhere that I would like to use for the soles, but first of all I'm going to see how this pattern works and if I can actually put it together quite easily. I do like using, as they're called, indie patterns because you get like a lot more of unique things. One of the downsides to it is that there are often little small mistakes in the pattern itself in which it does not line up, but it lines up really nicely here. So I find that weird. But you know, we're gonna work around it and we're gonna do our best. I always trace my patterns because I'd like to keep the um, other sizes available to myself. So I might cut out the largest size and then trace everything else. I decided to trace my pattern on slightly thicker paper. This is just normal printer paper, but I cannot see through it when I have it just flat on the table. So I made myself a quick little light box, simply by taking a clear box that I dumped the contents out of, and put, like, a lamp in it. It works! Just made my twill, and this has taught me two things. The first thing is I need to size down. I've made a little chart for myself based on measurements because the sizing is a bit odd here. Um, and it turns out I'm a size 38. I will probably go with a 7 instead of a 9. Another thing is, well, it's actually pretty easy to put together. I think I can put this together in like 20 minutes or so. So that's good. I have all of my pieces cut out. I have them quilted completely. I think there's some footage of it that... I'll include now. Um, basically I decided to do this because it gives some stiffness to the fabric and the pattern does call for interfacing all of these pieces. Instead of interfacing I did the very long and tedious thing of quilting them, which kind of has the same effect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow instructions and the first thing we need to do is to pin this part which is the foot to the boot. So now that that's pinned, I'm going to sew this down with a quarter inch allowance. It is kind of annoying that it is in inches because a quarter inch cannot be directly translated to centimeters, like three eighths of an inch, which is a centimeter, basically. However, my sewing machine foot like from the needle to the outside is a quarter inch, so I got lucky with that.
I have pinned and sewed the back seam and I did this just sitting behind the sewing machine. And now I am working on the sole and with that I can actually stand up quite nicely. I've done this one off camera because it's very fiddly and I'm gonna try and shoot it but I don't know if I'm going to include it because it is on a very awkward angle angle to film. And then sewing this with a quarter inch and then I need to do the lining. And I'm gonna have a very fluffy lining and I'm probably gonna sew that completely off camera because it's very fluffy and kind of annoying to sew. I've been out for a little bit, I've had dinner, and I also made these. They're made the exact same way as those, only without the quilting and with an extra layer of felt in between just to create a little bit more cushion. However, I'm gonna continue with these. What I need to do is I need to put these together like that one and then I'm gonna turn that one right side out, I'm gonna keep it like that. What I will probably do before this is fold this over and top stitch it down and then do that and then I will slip stitch this inside kind of below it um, just to create a nice little finish. This is also why I hate the fluffy fabric. It's shedding everywhere. Now that's stuck. I'm gonna flip this to the outside, or at least make an attempt at it. And there we have our slipper. If you see it, it's still rippling right there. That's the quilt I'm doing. But I'm gonna try my best. Line this one up here, pin it like that, and then hand stitch that down. And I'll have myself a very nice comfy slipper for the winter. Which it's gonna be great, but probably too warm for now, so I'm gonna make myself another pair, probably tomorrow, out of a different fabric, and not with this fluffy lining. And probably also not quilted. Okay, I thought this project would be finished now, but it's not because I went shopping with my mom today and went to a fabric store and I actually found some anti-slip-ish fabric and I just checked it on the ground and it does not slip at all. So I'm going to cut out two sole shapes for my own slippers now. Whip stitch them on because I'm not going to take anything apart on that one and then it should be good. I've got gray as well. If they had black I would have bought black but they didn't have black so I bought gray which I will use for some of my darker fabrics that I would also like to make slippers out of. So now I've got these to actually help me make these slippers. And they're well and truly finished. There we are. I have ended up cutting seam allowance that I did cut away because I figured these do not fray. And I did use a blanket stitch um, just because it's a little bit neater and it does secure it a little bit better. And now they are fully finished. I'm super happy with this. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope you will subscribe and await my next sewing through my stash projects.